Hello everybody, back to do the uh, video that I was telling you guys I was going to do with regards to plumbing and uh, where wires go and cables go and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to start with uh, this list. I made a list of stuff that I thought would be important for uh, people to know where they go. Um, this is for the younger builders out there. I know when I first started building models, I wish I had somebody who uh, could tell me what the parts were uh, and what they are for, uh, especially if you're trying to get any kind of uh, realism because to get realism, you're going to need to know how to, how to run the, uh, the plumbing and the wires and all that stuff uh, and what the purpose of it is so that you can, uh, you can understand what it's doing. Um, <clears throat> if you take a heater hose and plug it into a uh, valve cover, it's probably not going to look very good in your model. But So we'll start off with uh, battery cables. So uh, all the kits that you're going to be building if you're building cars are going to have a uh, single battery that goes in the front. Um, if you're doing a bigger truck like an F-150 or a tractor trailer, they're going to have multiple batteries uh, and they just go in series. So one's connected to the other, negative, negative, positive, positive, all the way down. Um, but the most important thing for you to know is that on batteries for car builds, you have a black wire and you have a red wire. So the black wire is a ground and that runs to the frame or the chassis somewhere. Um, and your red wire usually runs down to your starter, to your starter solenoid, which is on top of the, uh, which is on top of the starter in most cases. Uh, some vehicles have starter solenoids that are on the firewall, but I mean, if, if you have the starter, um, well, I'm going to talk about starter here in a second, but if you have a starter that has uh, a big round disc on the side of the motor, uh, usually it's on the right hand side if you're looking from sitting in the car forward. Uh, it's on the right hand side bottom right by the oil pan. Uh, if it's got a big round cylinder and then a small round cylinder on top of that, that's your starter solenoid and that's where your power wire should go. Um, it's good to run them along the firewall, so, so try to route them along the firewall is probably the best thing for you to do with the uh, with those wires to give it a little bit more realistic looking uh, look. Uh, you can buy um, battery uh, photo etched connections from uh, Detail Masters, and they're they're perfect 124th, 125th size, uh, and they look great on models. So you can get those like five bucks or something like that from Detail Masters if you go online and you can have a look at that stuff. Uh, spark plug wires and coils. So spark plug wires, it depends on what you're building. If you're building a uh, Hemi that happens to have the valve or the spark plug wires going down through the valve covers, uh, then that's where they're going to have to go. But you're going to know that because when you get the valve covers, the valve covers are going to have four uh, positions on top of the valve covers that clearly indicate where there would be something uh, located, so uh, a spark plug wire or something along those lines. Um, it'll look just like this. And you are also going to uh, want to know what it is. Is it a six cylinder? Is it an eight cylinder? Or is it a four cylinder? Um, You'll be able to tell by looking at the distributor cap. If the model has any detail at all, you'll actually have the tabs on top of the distributor cap. And the distributor cap always looks like a little round box with little tabs sticking up on top of it. Um, when you look at that, if it has eight tabs with one in the middle, you know it's an eight cylinder. Six tabs with one in the middle, six cylinder, four tabs, one in the middle, four cylinder. Pretty simple. Uh, the spark plugs on those engines run down the sides usually, so on a six cylinder, if it's a V6, you're going to have three on one side, three on the other side. If it's a straight six, you're going to have all six on one side. If it's a four cylinder, um, you're going to have all four on one side. Um, so if it's a uh, eight cylinder um, normal, you would have four on each side and they usually run just underneath the valve covers unless, like I say, it's a Hemi or a racing engine or something like that and you have them coming down through the, uh, through the valve covers. Um, and you, you'll be able to tell from the kit because the kit should pretty much define what you're doing for the engine um, and the valve covers when you start putting it together. 
Uh, also, you would have a coil. So on some older models, like the old uh, 57 Bel Air, the 56 T-Bird, stuff like that, they actually come with a coil that you have to mount on the motor somewhere. And it's just a little cylindrical shaped thing. And that would be where your middle wire would go from your distributor cap would go to your coil um, again some cars uh, some cars are going to have them in different locations so you're just going to have to figure out the best spot for you to run that but that's how it goes the outside uh, diameter little tabs those are for your spark plug wires the one in the middle is for your coil I wouldn't be too concerned about firing order because if anybody looks at your model and says that's not the correct firing order, you have my uh, my blessing to smack them right square in the mouth uh, because that's just being kind of anal, right? And if you post it and somebody says something like that, some of the, uh, the keyboard commandos that know it all, don't pay any attention to it, right? You're, you're not building an engine that's not going to work properly if it's not in the right firing order. Um, Starter. So like I said, starter is usually on the bottom right hand side if you're sitting in the driver's seat looking forward on the engine and it's right back by the flywheel. You can see on this one here, it actually has the uh, bigger circle on the bottom and the smaller circle on the top or, or a little uh, cylindrical shape. Uh, the top would be your solenoid, the bottom is your starter and all that does is when that gets electricity the solenoid throws out the uh, the starter wheel and the, it, it runs on the flywheel so that's what starts up your starts up your engine but you don't need to know that because they're not going to run. Uh, fuel lines. So for fuel lines all cars have fuel pumps, so you're going to have a fuel pump somewhere. Uh, it might be in the front right lower uh, corner of the engine. Um, that's where it is on some cars. Um, and I, I, I'm far from a mechanic, so I'm not going to tell you that Chevys have them there and Dodges don't because I don't know which is where. But you're just going to have to determine when you're looking at it where the fuel pump is. And the fuel pump is what provides the fuel to your carburetors. So if you run a wire from uh, down there, like a 28 gauge wire from your fuel pump up and then back to your carburetors, you're good. Some have fuel pumps back in the gas tanks, like the newer cars, the, the uh, uh, Trans Ams that are on the road now. And most new cars have them in the, in the tank or somewhere back by the tank. They're not located on the vehicle as, or on the motor as much. Those are more mechanical pumps. Um, and the fuel lines run from the tank through the firewall or, or through the uh, the frame line along the frame rails up and then up into uh, the uh, the fuel pump area um, or, or from the gas tank up to the carburetor I guess it would be uh, anyway it'll, it'll look like this and if you look at this diagram here you can see that that's what I'm kind of looking for for uh, for the fuel lines Okay, radiator hoses. So for the radiator hoses, they usually go from a water pump, which is mounted on the front of the engine. So it would be on the front of the engine, the lower portion of the engine, and that's run off of your belt. So when that pumps water, it actually uh, takes water from the engine and runs it into your heater core, which is on the inside of your firewall, on the passenger side usually. So if you run your heater hoses from your water pump, up and then into the firewall on the passenger side. Uh, sometimes there might be a long box there that represents a, uh, a heater box, maybe, maybe not, but if you put it on the passenger side, it'll look realistic. Um, and then bring it back out and uh, bring it to the pump and it just circulates the uh, hot water through the uh, heater core so that you have heat inside the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, and last but not least, you have brake lines. <coughs> Excuse me. So. Brake lines are pretty simple on the older cars. You've got a brake booster, which is right in front of the driver's side on the firewall. Um, it, com it comes out uh, and it goes into the brake reservoir. Underneath the brake reservoir is where you'll see those coils of wire. And all that is is to allow for flex. Um, and then that'll usually come down and go into a splitter. From a splitter, it goes off into four directions. So it'll go to your two front wheels, and to your back wheels because obviously when you put your foot on the brake you have different different braking pressures between your back and your front um, so if you simply follow along the uh, frame on either side 
uh, and then go back and then split up over. Some cars will actually have one brake line that runs back from the brake booster uh, or the brake cylinder and then runs back to the uh, splitter which is sitting on top of the pumpkin or the uh, rear end housing. And then from there it splits off and comes across the rear end housing and then along the axle uh, and then up into your into your brakes. Uh, the front ones usually come down and then they turn into a rubber which is a flex hose and the flex hose comes down to your front brake calipers and that allows you for your turning of your wheels and stuff like that. So if you wanted to simulate those you could use uh, again a 28 or a 30 gauge wire down to there and then if you could find a tube that would fit over the rubber or over the uh, the metal the uh, metal wire that could simulate your flex line that runs down to your brake uh, your front brakes if you wanted to get into a, a whole lot of detail um, anyway that's probably about the most uh, plumbing that you're going to do you can get really silly uh, especially if you're working with like a, a 1 18th scale or something like that 1 12th scale model um, where you want to do electrical and all of that stuff and if you're going to do that you're going to have to do a lot of research on that particular vehicle you're building because <clears throat> this is all basic general stuff that I'm telling you here so um, Use it, use it to make your models look more realistic and hopefully it'll, uh, it'll help you out when you're doing your building. Like I said, I wish I had this uh, capability or knowledge when I was younger. Um, I didn't, so I just did whatever the heck I wanted to do and what I thought looked cool. Uh, probably completely wrong, but oh well, I had fun doing it. Um, don't listen to the uh, keyboard commandos out there that will tell you stuff like uh, that's the wrong color for that year or whatever the case may be, right? Do what you enjoy and have fun doing it. I build whatever I want to build and it's that simple. Um, if I want to take a uh, helicopter and paint it bright pink, I'm going to take a helicopter and paint it bright pink and that's, that's the end of it. So uh, hopefully you guys can use these tips to, uh, to benefit your building and um, make your models look a little bit more realistic. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to continue on working on my uh, F-18 uh, Hornet and uh, I will see you guys with the next video. So thanks for watching, keep on building, have fun, see you next time. Hey everybody, Dan here. Thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, comment down below if you wish. Uh, I'll certainly try to respond and I'll uh, keep the tips and tricks videos rolling as well as some updates on some uh, builds that I'm working on. Thanks again, see you in a bit.